Jesus. Lord, we come before you, God. We're praising thanksgiving on our lips, oh God. In the name of Jesus. With a merry song in our heart on today, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Because you're worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to you. Oh 
holding on to faith, we know that nothing is too hard for you to do. You've got this in control and watching us now. When it looks as if we can't win, you wrap us in your arm and step in. Thank you, Jesus. And everything we need, you supply. You've got this in control, and now we know that you made a way. And our backs were against the wall. our backs were against the wall. And it looked, and it looked as if it was so so glad that you made a way. And we're standing here. And we're standing here. Only because you made. Let me sing that again. Standing here. Not knowing how we'll get through this test. But holding on to faith, we know that nothing catches you by surprise. You've got this figured out, and you're watching us now. But when it looks as if we can't win, this is what he does. He wraps us in his arms and steps in. Everything we need you supply You got this in control And now we know that you You made a way When our backs were against the wall our backs were against the wall And it looked and it looked as if it was so, so glad that you Made a way And we're standing here And we're standing only because you made, you made, sing you, uh -huh. made a way. When our backs were against, when our backs were against the wall, and it looked, and it looked as if it was God so, so bad that you made a way. And we're standing here, and we're standing here, only because, only because you made. One more time to you.
Father, in Jesus' precious name, thank you today for the songs of Zion that tell part of the story. Because <laughs> I got the other part of the story. Of your deliverance, your salvation, and the love you have for us. Thank you today. Thank you for people that are anointed to sing thy praises. And for those of us that join in and get in that anointing. And we get blessed in the name of Jesus. And God, I ask you not to word my mouth and give me what to say. And give me how to say what you told me to say. And bind flesh. Let no self glory in thy sight. And if folks say pretty good, help me to remind myself and remind them it was the Lord that put the word in me to give to the people. Because God wants it all said and done. It's all about you. One man plant, one man water, but God giveth the increase. So hide me now and God use me as thy mouthpiece to bless, strengthen, and encourage these your people. And let the words in my mouth the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. To the saints today, we have two scriptures or two texts, I should say. Mark 8. Mark chapter 8. Verses 22 through 26. Mark chapter 8, verses 22 through 26. And then James chapter 1, verses 5 through 8. Amen. For some of you, it will be on your screen. For those here, you might want to use your Bibles or maybe you already had those committed to memory. I ain't doubting y'all today, y'all Bible scholars. Bishop Thomas would say he's still learning how to preach. He's still practicing. Amen. All right. Is our reader ready today? All right, ma'am. Mark verses 8. Mark 8 verses 22 through 26. And he cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand, and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his, on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again on, upon his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. And he sent him away to his house, saying, Neither go into the town nor tell it to any in the town. James chapter 1, verses 5 through 8. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that, waver, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Amen. Amen. I want to talk today from the topic, focused faith. May be seated. Focused faith. Now, let me begin today's discussion by confessing that I'm being as transparent and as candid as I possibly can. You can't tell people everything. But I'm literally preaching to myself today. And God and I, we're giving you uh, a front row seat 
uh, to listen and observe our discussion. This is me and the Lord talking today. Y'all can, y'all can listen. I, I was awakened the other morning, Mr. Randolph, and having a dream. And, and God can speak to us in so many, so many different ways. And I had this dream, and I saw some members in our church in the dream. I ain't call no names. And, and some of them had gotten involved with some people that meant them no good and meant the church no good. Mm-hmm. And I saw them, and I said, oh, that ain't going to turn out too well. And so me and my hands-on approach, dropped what I was doing, I said, let me go deal with this right now. Hmm. Now, the Lord told me, no, there are some people that are capable of handling this. Let them do it. I said, no, Lord, I'm going to do this myself. And so, uh, <laughs> um, well, I was in the middle of handling the, the issue. Brother Green, Brother Grump called me and said, Pastor, time to preach on telecast. Uh-oh. And I was not prepared to preach. Because I was doing something else. Thank you, Jesus. So now I go into panic mode and start praying. God anoint me. God, where my mouth? And I start praying for a mighty and a magical anointing. You catch that? A mighty and a magical anointing because I got distracted. Okay, all right, all right. So I woke from my dream. And Lord said, preach about focusing your faith. Uh -huh. Now, I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about this toxic political environment we find ourselves in. However, I will be remiss in my duty as a preacher and I have a concern about people's health and welfare and justice, if I did not encourage you to vote and vote early. I stand with Bishop Blake. We need to vote, y'all. I can tell you to vote for you. We need to vote as early as you can. And in my humble opinion, we should be aware of any form of suppression of someone that don't want you to vote. Now nah, I'm going to move on. That's my PSA for today. Now Bishop Thomas, rest his soul, uh, he would often talk about the spirit of distraction. Some of y'all might remember that. And we would laugh uh, of some of our universal church language. Like when people put their finger up, and that, that has a whole bunch of uh, definitions or interpretations. For some, it means I go to the bathroom. For some, it means I'm leaving. For some, it means you're talking too long. But that finger is designed for you to excuse what they're doing after the finger goes up. The Lord have mercy. And I have seen people in the church. Uh-huh. Well, sitting here in the pulpit, see a whole lot in the congregation. And some folk come to church, they don't, they don't, they don't have a baby. But they find somebody else's baby. And beg for the baby. 
And then while they have the baby, they paint with the baby through the whole service. Distraction. I watch those people, they come to the altar as a team, as a group. Like there's, there's like a group deliverance. Y'all see them. They come to the altar holding the baby or holding somebody's hand. Lord have mercy. And while you're praying for them, they tugging on somebody else's hand. Distraction. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Or while you're preaching, uh, the, the, the cell phone begs your attention. Ain't that much scripture in the world. Are you checking sports scores and News events and amber alerts. So you ain't you ain't researching. You ain't you 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 doing something else. And I'm guilty. Y'all watch it, y'all. I'm guilty. Too young being transparent. At a birth, I was sitting in the pulpit and had my little uh, tablet out, and I was reading the scripture. And then a boom, an email popped in. I said, Let me. What's this email? I hit it. And now I'm reading email. And the Lord said to me, put that tablet up. You ain't reading no Bible. See, God deals with me like I didn't be dealt with. Amen, somebody. And I was just distracted. Thank you, Jesus. And so while you're playing with the baby, while you're playing with the phone, while you're playing with your friend, you miss the essence of the message or you miss God's word be delivered for that day. And then later on when you hit a wall, the word you would have received to help you, you missed it. Uh-oh. Can I say that again? Something you're trying to counsel away, the world was given that would have helped you. But you missed it. And then God showed me that just being in the midst of his people, God can help you. Perhaps the message that day was a message about joy. But because you were in the midst, what God's word was going through, you got healed. Okay, let me make it, let me deliver it this way. The word don't have to address your need specifically for it to help you. I see I lost some people. All right. The one with the issue of blood had a need. Christ was not focused on that woman. He was on his way to deal with uh, Jairus and his daughter. But she had a need. So she pressed her way and got through the crowd, touched him of his garment. And then Christ says, who touched me? He was not looking at that woman. But she touched him and withdrew healing virtue from Jesus. Because she was in the midst of the word of God. She got delivered and healed. And God was nowhere on her. She was nowhere on the Lord's mind. Let me move on. People struggle from a spirit of distraction. We struggle from this, y'all. I looked this up. It's called ADHD. Attention Deficit hyperactivity disorder. And this is the disease that has swept our nation. And apparently it focuses only on young boys of color. Black and Hispanic boys. It don't bother the Caucasian boys. It only bothers boys of color for some reason. Y'all might, might want to check that. 
and the prescription Ritalin uh, is merely a drug that suppresses the child's brain stimuli. It's like a downer. Mm -hmm. But the fact remains that all of us suffer from a lack of attention. <laughs> Let me say that again. All of us. We all have a problem with the lack of attention. Any IT person will tell you, or public relations person, they'll tell you, that you only have seconds to get someone's attention before they turn the screen or turn the page. Back in the day, tell me if y'all, I'm, I'm showing, showing my age. When, when, when we had uh, compu uh, personal computers, they had the five and a quarter floppy disk. And you put in the, it was called the help disk. It go in one slot. And the other disk, it went in the other slot. I know I'm showing my age. I know, I know. But the PC, it, it had to boot up. It would take several minutes for it to start working. You could hear it rumming, rumming, uh, rummaging in the background, making noise like it was shooting dice. And you had time to put the, to Scott, to put the disc in the slots, go make a cup of coffee, get some water to come back, and just now starting to come on. Took several minutes. Now with the advance of technology and, and all that stuff, now it takes seconds. And for some of y'all, that's still too long. Y'all know it's true. A show came on about, I don't know, 10 years ago, it was called 24. The show was called 24. And they took a whole season to cover what happened in one 24-hour period. A whole season, y'all. A whole season was devoted to one man an hour or a day in one man's life. And now we have series that are only like five episodes that go through generations. <laughs> they discover kingdoms and kill dragons in, in a, in a, in a six-episode season. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Because my teacher says, you better help me get to the end of this thing. I'm getting tired of waiting on you. I'm going to turn to your competitor. Watch up, mouse. And so people are vying for our attention. Yes, Lord. And even here, they often remind me. Matter of fact, they stop reminding me. We'll be singing, and I'll be feeling good with the song. It's the past last week you sing. Last week you sing like two and a half minutes. That's way too long. So we just cut it out. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, because they have discovered that people, they're going to spend so much time on your telecast and then they're going someplace else. You can call the devil if you want to. Ain't nothing with the devil. But the devil done run down and went, they look at someone else's broadcast. You still singing. Okay, all right. And, and I have learned to hear people and adjust to people that we might win them for Christ. Hope you're praying with, with me today. Thank you, Jesus. Even our services, we've had to kind of change our services. We have 
streamlined our service. The altar prayer, it was good, but we didn't cut it out. See, when the faith, it's important, but we didn't cut it out. I love the choir singing. We had to edit that part out. Because people are not sitting for two and a half hours anymore for service, looking at their screen. Their focus don't last that long. You can even adjust with it or get left behind all by yourself, feeling good with your four-hour service. You and your family, because you drove the car, they can't drive home by themselves. But if Nicholas could, he'd leave you right here, Mr. Birth. He'd leave you and say, Mama, I'll come back and pick you up. Amen. Now, when I was in high school, I'm going to soon be done as soon as I'm finished. Because I know y'all don't have a whole lot of attention with me today. We did read quite a bit, Sister Moses. And there were books like Pearl S. Buck's The Good Earth. Or The Catcher and the Rye. Or uh, Moby Dick by Herman Melville or Alexander Haley's Roots. Real thick books that, that required you to dedicate a lot of time to reading. And then you would be quizzed on the book that you read the following week. Y'all, y'all, y'all know it's not, don't y'all. But some of us got smart. And we discovered something called Cliff Notes. Look at y'all getting happy with y'all cheating selves. We go to the store and we buy Cliff Notes, little yellow and black books. Uh huh. But there was a danger in relying on Cliff Notes. First of all, the teacher knew about Cliff Notes. Mm -hmm. Number two, the Cliff Notes, uh, they were a synopsis of the book. So they didn't cover all the detail in the book. And any good teacher would find some nugget and put it on the test that wasn't covered in the cliff notes. Because mm -hmm. I would do it myself. And then also the cliff notes, they didn't really have embedded in them the theme or the moral of the book. As life does us today, we come to church and help me Jesus. We don't really get in there because we don't have the attention span to do it. We gloss over. Help me, Jesus. The foundational truths of the word of God. And so the details of life, we miss them. When the test comes, we fail it. Or the moral teachings of the word of God, we miss them because we don't look at the cliff notes. Help me, Jesus. Throughout scripture, we see people that had short attention spans and how they were distracted and the results were devastating. Let's look at a few of these people. Maybe Lot's wife is the most famous. When they were told to leave the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, Angel said, don't look back. They were told, don't look back on those cities that celebrated homosexuality and, and those lifestyles. They were told, don't look back on those cities 
The one that have carnal relationships with angelic beings. Don't look back at that stuff, but she did. She got distracted and the rest of his history, she was turned to a pillar of salt. Be careful of that spirit that's calling you back to look at your friends and your family. They want to pull you back into a lifestyle or relationships that are poisonous to your spirit and your anointing. Can I say that again? That thing calling you back to your roots. You all better watch that spirit. Or that longing to go back and prove to people that, that you made it. And those people that doubted you, you're going to prove them wrong. You better watch that spirit. Because that may be a trap designed to distract you from going forward. Hey, man, somebody. I have learned that I'm trying to prove nobody that I'm saved. Thank you, Jesus. You, I can't prove you that I'm saved. Just watch me work. And God will validate me. You can doubt me. You can scoff at me. But that, you don't bother me. Because if I prove you wrong, what does it matter? If Christ can prove that he was the son of God, to his enemies, who you going to prove that you saved to your friends and your former loved ones? That's a distraction from you moving forward and getting your anointing and your deliverance in God. And if you ain't careful, you be like, like that dog that returned to his vomit. You say, why? Because to the dog at first, the vomit didn't look like vomit. It was something that he saw that got his attention. But when he got close, he found out that it was vomit, but it was too late then. He's already eaten it. Distraction. King David got distracted. And when he was serving Saul, he was doing pretty good. Could identify Saul's enemies and he would take him out. But then he became king and got distracted. Looked down at his friend's wife. Knew Uriah was one of David's best soldiers. Saw his wife taking a bath. And he got distracted. Well, how did this happen? Of Beverly, because if you read the text earlier, it says that it was the season when kings made war. And David should have been out fighting wars with his troops. But he took some vacation time, took some <clears throat> slick leave. So he was out of place. And when you're out of place, you have some extra time to see what you don't need to be looking at. Now, if you keep yourself busy in God, you are more productive. Y'all, um, y'all, I'm preaching today, y'all. In this day and time, we should be busy doing the Lord's work, but when we take some time off from church services, take time off from being in fellowship, time off from reading your word, we on vacation spiritually, and we get distracted. Amen, somebody. Take a note out of the apostles' page. Christ had ascended, and they've been filled with the Holy Ghost. Now they were preaching the gospel. And they were seeing great results. The first day they preached on the Holy Ghost spell, 3,000 souls got added to the church. Wow, what a revival that was. They were rolling in ministry. And then here come distraction. One day they feed people and someone said, y'all ain't doing them widows and children. Y'all ain't treating them right. They didn't argue and debate with the people because that would have been a distraction. They said, you know what? Us preaching 
It's more important than feeding people food and arguing with y'all. So we're going to find us seven men. Not just seven, any old seven men. We're going to find seven men full of wisdom and full of, of the Holy Ghost and give them this job. Now, now look at what the Lord showed me. They found some people that were qualified to do their job. Here's the wisdom in that. They were able to delegate this assignment to people that were capable. So the work of God could continue. Now, for someone who can't handle it, they're going to mess it up. And now you got to go back and fix up, fix up what they messed up. Now you are again distracted. But get the job to someone that can handle it. You keep on going. Amen. We are warned about putting our hands to the plow and looking back. Distraction. Well, let me get to the text and get out of y'all way because I'm, I'm, I'm already on that part world. Um, y'all get ready to change, change the uh, channel. James is describing in his text men being delivered. Because of their faith. And when we pray, we must be real focused what we're praying about. Because things can come in and distract you while you're praying. Amen. One thing is called fear. You want something big from God. But fear will come in and talk you out of it. God can't do all that. You ain't worthy of that. If that happens, people are going to look at you funny. And soon you will find yourself uh, compromising your request to God. Well, God, if I can't be the CEO, then make me the, uh, the supervisor. If, if I can't get the house on the hill, then give me a shack around the corner. Thank you, Jesus. If I can't be this, then God, I will lower my expectations. And now, although you really want it, you talk yourself out of it. And soon, you are distracted. Because a little sign will come to pull you away because your faith is not focused. Thank you, Jesus. I was courting Mrs. Pruitt. It was a long distance love affair. I'm smiling now, y'all. I can't get distracted from the message. But anyway, I called her one day, Brother Green, and we were talking, and she got some, cause I'm kind of off. I'm talking, and she ain't hardly responding. And, and so I said, um, Is everything okay? Her response was off. And I discerned she was distracted. And so I'm going to hang up the phone because I don't wish your time and mine. I said, but however, let me repeat again what my intentions are. I'm a young preacher, and I'm going places in life. I'm trying to educate myself, make myself a better man, and I intend to marry you one day. And so when you make up your mind, you know my number, you can call me back. But right now, you are distracted, and, 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 but my mind is made up, so when you're ready, ring me back again. It wasn't too long the phone rang because she was able to adjust her attention and she figured out that I was worth the trip. Y'all right. missing me today. And if you double-minded, you're all over the map. You need healing, but now you ask for some money. You need deliverance, but now you want a husband. But if, you, if your mind is double-minded, you don't get nothing from God because you are unstable. 
and God deals with, he is consistent and God is focused. God knows his plan for you. Thank you, Jesus. But when you waver, you're tossed to and fro. Sometimes up, sometimes down. You're walking God, it, 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 it changes like the seasons. And the smallest uh, text message or the smallest email can just throw you off. Jesus. You go to work feeling good and someone cross your path and leave you one strange word and all, all your anointing goes out the window. You, you, did, you just double minded. Thank you, Jesus. Life is built with distractions, but God can put some blinders on you. Let me deal with blinders. And I'm, I'm going to move on. Now, I'm not a horse track man and I don't play the horses. I'm not a horse handler. But I read someplace that these big old strong race horses, they put blinders on them. They're going to see straight ahead. Have, have y'all heard this before? Even while they're in the stalls, before, they, they, before they, they take off, they put on blinders so they can't see the lane next to them. It might be a good-looking male, and he might get distracted. Or he might see his competitor is bigger and stronger than he is, like we do today. Now, I know I'm on the scene, but I can't sing as Good Sister Randolph. That's okay. I got a song that she cannot sing that God wants to hear. So you sing your song and give your word. God has a work for you to do. Don't get distracted by other people. To some people, you ain't going to never measure up to some people. You can try all you want to. And, 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 and for them, you never cut the mustard. Thank you, Jesus. I stop trying to please people. I'm going to serve God, and, and y'all figure out down the line what you need to do. But I'm going to serve God, and God will help me get where I need, need to go. I am focused on my faith. Let me bring it to a close. This man was blind, and Christ was always dealing with distractions. Let me talk about my favorite brothers. The uh, disciples. Bless them, brothers. They always having arguments. Who's the greatest? When Christ wasn't around. People come for healing. They couldn't do it. They argue about who was the greatest. They always focus on the need to minister. They arguing about a seat and a title. Y'all ain't hear me today. It happens to us today in the church. We arguing about who's going to sit next to the pastor. Who's going to carry the pastor's briefcase. Who on program. And someone comes to the altar, we don't even pray for him. Arguing about who's going to grab the oil first. Help me. That's distracted. I got to sit in a certain seat so, so the bishop can see me. Lord, have mercy. You need an anointing. And God's direction and hearing God's voice. Because God will put you where you need to be to succeed. But we want a man to put us up. That's the wrong focus, y'all. Distracted. Thank you, Jesus. Time us to preach the gospel and minister. We focus on the offering. Or on the goal of the passing anniversary. I take care of myself, but I'm going to focus on God and go with me, my knees. Y'all ain't hearing me today. We get y'all distracted. We arguing about whose name to baptize in. Sprinkle it or dump them. It shouldn't matter. Focus on them people getting saved. Thank you, Jesus. We put the car before the horse, as some people say. So here's this man. Was blind. And they brought the man to Jesus that he might touch him. 
Now, there's another blind man that Jesus healed. This was recorded in the book of John. And this man uh, was blind from birth. And Christ healed the man on the Sabbath day. Christ left, left the area. And now the man walking around screaming and testifying, I can see, I can see. First, she's got mad. They said, uh, who healed you? And what did he heal you on? Distraction. They were just parenting. They said, Mama and Daddy, who healed your son? They said, we don't know. He grown. Ask him yourself. They said, this is a young man who healed you. He says, I don't know. That ain't important to me right now. But I, but I, but I, I can't report this. I was blind. But now I see. I don't care who it was, but the outcome is I can see. And before I could not, so I'm focused on my healing. Thank you, Jesus. When I was praying for the Holy Ghost, I don't know who was praying with me. I was focused on me getting delivered. Thank you, Jesus. So this young man, he was blind. And they brought him. To Jesus. And I love how Jesus was purposeful in his ministry. He was focused on that young man getting delivered and catch this staying delivered. Some folk get delivered, but they can't stay delivered because they dibble and they dabble. They in and they out and they up and they down and they ain't focused. And so you can be tossed to and fro and lose your deliverance. So Jesus was concerned about the young man getting delivered and staying delivered. He took him by the hand and look at the text. He led him out of town. Some people are around you. You better learn how to get away from them because they are a distraction from your anointing. They'll hinder you in your deliverance. They'll weigh you down in your ministry. Hallelujah. Some folk get them by the hand and take them away from distractions. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And so Christ laid hands on him and he spit on the young man's eyes and rubbed them. Now, had he been around the wrong people? It was a question. Why spitting on him? Where's the Tylenol? Or why did they call 911? He should have called it in the Kaiser Permanente or somebody else. But Jesus, he had a method and had a plan to see that young man being delivered. So Christ put his hands on him. And Christ said, uh, how are you seeing right about now? Young man said, he said, I see men, but they look like trees. Walking like trees. Well, Christ knew that there was something wrong. Because men should not look like trees. Men and women are like us. We are the, are the same kind of flesh and blood. And no one should be so big in your life that they are bigger than Jesus. No one should be so dominant over you that they look like trees. We are people of the same passion. Hallelujah. So, Sister Scott, I don't envy your anointing. If God deliver you, he can anoint me just as well. I don't envy your, that man's wealth or that man's wife. What you have, God gave it to you. God give me the same thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ recognized that that young man was not seeing too plain. So Jesus touched him again. Perhaps you need a, another touch. One more trip to the altar. One more day of fasting. One more church service. One more uh, appointment at the Lord's feet to get your full deliverance. The point is that you are focused on breaking through to God. 
Hallelujah. What folks say about you in the corner, it don't matter to you. Thank you, Jesus. I'll say it again to some people, you ain't going to never measure up. Some people, you're never going to be wise enough or strong enough, but I'm not distracted by your opinion of me. What does God say about me? I'm going in my seat. So Jesus saw the young man. His eyesight was off focus. And so Christ touched him one more time. And the man said, now I can see clearly. I see people in perspective. Hallelujah. I see my problems in perspective. I see my ministry in perspective. I'm focused on my faith. Hallelujah. I see Jesus as the Son of God. I see Jesus as my strong tower. I see Jesus as my help and my deliverance and my strength. Say yes. Yes, Lord. Now watch Jesus. He was already out of town. And Christ said, now go back home to your family. Yes, Lord. But don't go back into that town. Apparently, there was something in that town that had a grip on that young man. There was something in that town that had influence over the young man. There's something over there that will impact you in a negative way. There's something over here that will steal your focus from God. Avoid that area. Don't go near that area. Put up a no trespassing sign and stay away and protect your deliverance. Protect your good mind. Protect your anointing and your call. Stay focused on your calling. Stay focused on your healing. Stay focused on the kingdom of God. Yes. Yes, Lord. As I close, many things are going around in our minds. When will this election ever end? When will brutality cease? Injustice, when will it stop? Hallelujah. The pandemic, when will we be able to hug one another? Take masks off. I don't know. I don't know when. I don't know how. But my focus is on Jesus. My focus is on the Lord. My focus and my help, it cometh from the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I will look unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help ain't coming from Fauci. My help ain't coming from President Trump. My help ain't coming from a paycheck. All my help, it cometh from the Lord. Focused. 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 It's the Randolph. When y'all give him praise and worship service. Thank you, Jesus. Many times you, you close your eyes to people. Because while you're seeing somebody, they ain't dialed in. They're looking off into the ceiling, out the window. You praising God for a breakthrough. You praising God for a visitation. They ain't on the same page with you. But you keep on singing. Keep on praising. And by and by, the Holy Ghost breaks through. The Holy Ghost falls in you, falls on you. And soon, you're singing lyrics and you're hitting notes never hit before. Hallelujah. There comes a time in my message. I'm looking at you. Hallelujah. I'm depending on the organ or the drums. But my help 
shows up the God that called me to preach thank God you didn't call me you didn't hire me you can't fire me but the Holy Ghost falls in me falls on me just preach through it I called you I feel your mouth stay focused open your mouth now and give him glory Uh -huh. I got to go. I got to go. Hallelujah. But let me throw this in. Then I'm going to sit down for real. When I was in undergraduate school, I was on the debating team. And we learned some techniques to attack our opponents. One technique was to throw them off, throwing some information and some data to confuse them. And soon they'll be arguing your data and lose focus on the debate or topic at hand. Uh-huh. It's going on right now. They're they debating about mass and other stuff. And you're ignoring some other things that are more important. Yes, Lord. It happens in court sometimes. One attorney, he'll be arguing and throw in some evidence. And someone else will say, Your Honor, I object. That information is not germane to our discussion. Thank you, Jesus. It was put in there to throw off the jury. And make them lose distraction or lose focus on the evidence at hand. Uh -huh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So we're arguing yeah. about who's the greatest. Uh -huh. We're arguing yeah. about whether they have worship service on. Yeah. We're arguing yeah. about the song to sing. Yeah. We're arguing yeah. about the drums. Yeah. He off beat. The, the, the cymbals ain't tuned up. But we're losing the focus on the fact that the Lord said, if you call upon me, I'll hear you, and I'll answer you, and show you great and mighty things. We're missing the focus of the whole thing. God said, I inhabit the praises of my people. I don't care if the organist hit the wrong note. I don't care if the deacon is dead. I don't care if your hair weave falls out. The focus ain't on the individual, the focus ought to be on God. Hallelujah. The focus isn't on the color of my skin, the texture of my hair, the color of my suit. The focus is on God. Hallelujah. 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 Won't you join me and give him praise? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Focused. 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 Hallelujah. I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to lie. I'm going to really pray. But you can have. The most powerful rifle ever manufactured. But if the focus is off, you never hit your target. Let's pray today. Thank you, Jesus. You got some loved ones. The more you pray, the worse they seem to get. Don't lose focus. You got some issues be be before the Lord. And you praying, seems like it's getting worse. Don't lose focus. If you revert to your feelings, you're going to miss it. And the devil counts on you losing your focus. 
Because he knows if you stay on with God, he got to lose. So his only hope is to disarm you with distraction. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in Jesus' name, I did what you asked me to do. Help me to be the first partaker. I heard what the bank said. I read stuff in the papers. I heard the newscast. But there's nothing too hard for you. I put my trust. I put my faith back, God, with you today. So I command now in the name of Jesus. Bring our minds in. Give us to focus our faith on the God that can and will deliver. You cannot lie. But you promise you will bring it to pass. You're going to save our loved ones. You can make a way for us, oh God. That business, it shall be successful. That church, it shall be built. That sickness, it shall be cured. In the name of Jesus. And go when it's all said and done, the glory and the honor, it shall be thine. I pray in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Amen.